All right, folks, we are here. Man, I wish I could travel that quickly in real life because I lost a lot of daylight coming here. I probably have about an hour and a half of daylight left. But more importantly, this location is usually packed year round. We are completely alone. This is gonna be perfect. Man, I love this. Okay. Let's give her a walk. Yeah, let's park the car. A lot of snow. I guess I'll just... Whoa, it's slushy there. Really slushy. Holy, holy moly. Okay, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Let's park the car, unload the canoe. Let's get to her. Okay, so there's one distinct advantage in the snow is that hopefully I'll be able to just push the canoe instead of having to carry it. Then I can just make one trip with everything in it. So, yeah, let's see how that goes. My canoe, she is not the lightest in the world. She's also not too heavy. I think she's only around 50 pounds, which is amazing considering she's fiberglass. Anywho, talk more about her later. There's the lake coming up. Maybe I'll push. Maybe a little bit of use. So, I'm sure you can see the sun's just starting to set and I'm just getting here. So this will be interesting, for me at least. We are here at the lake, first part of it, there's a portage later, I have my life jacket on, not that that's going to stop the hypothermia if I fall into the water, but you know, here we are, let's get to her.
over my coat. Other than that. Standing up in a canoe. Bad idea. Well, I'd say that was pretty successful. Aside from almost losing my canoe off camera, I'll, I'll put that in. It'll be fun. I use the word fun very liberally. I'm trying not to fall into the water because this freshly fallen snow is just slippery. Left time. Cold. Very cold. Okay. Okay, day. Here we are. We are at the second portage, the only other portage other than the first one. I'm gonna try and do the same thing that I did last time, which is to drag Mont Cano just across everything. However, seeing as there are rapids right there, a bridge across, the terrain comes well up to there as you can see. So dragging my unfortunately stupidly heavy canoe because of the gear, I'll go over that later. Dragging that all the way up there, she's uh, she's gonna be fun. So unless I fall, and then that'll be good content, I'll just see you guys on the other side. Oh yeah, I'll just drag the canoe up the hill. This is brilliant. I'm not just gonna carry it like I know I can, like it's designed for. I'm just gonna drag it. That way, not only am I fighting its weight, carry the mass of it against gravity, but I'm also fighting the drag against the snow. So, yeah, I guess I'm being a little dramatic about that. But I'm tired. I'm tired, the sun's going down, I didn't make that much progress. This is just me trying to uh, pretend I'm not out of breath on camera. Time to go pick up my 90 pound sleeping bag or 
backpack. Here she is, flying in the snow. Okay, oh, oh, slipping. Okay, let's. How are we doing? All right. Let it never be said that I'm a smart man. I did that in the worst possible way. But alas, here we are on the other side. We're ready to put back in. I'm not gonna go too far because it is sunset. So I have to do everything. Firewood, tent, etc., etc. Yeah. Tend not to fall in. Boy, I didn't think this part through. All right, let's try this different way. Nope. Maybe this way. Graceful, but I sure as heck ain't getting in the water to push myself off properly. Okay, here we are. We're off. It's ironic that I'm wearing a life jacket and that I have a whistle on me because firstly, there's nobody around. And if there is, they're very good at hiding. Firstly, there's nobody around. And secondly, it is quite foolish what I'm doing because a couple minutes in this water and you're dead. Maybe less for me because I am not a strong swimmer. So, yeah. This canoe that I have comes from the era where canoes had to have built-in flotation. They had to be, what's the phrase, inherently buoyant? However, because of the age of this boat and the fact that I am not the first owner, One of the flotation chambers has a leak. I found that out in the summer when I intentionally dumped the canoe when the water was warm to practice riding it. Because if you're gonna go on canoe trips, especially canoe trips by yourself, being able to right your canoe in case you dump it is a critical skill. The problem is the um, flotation chamber having filled with water became so incredibly heavy, made the canoe so incredibly heavy that there was just no way. There was, I, it, I, it couldn't be done. I could not write the canoe in warm water. I spent quite a long time trying it, 
maybe when the warmer weather comes, I will, uh, I'll make a video on that and I'll fix this, fix this up so it can actually be done. That or I'm an idiot and I've not been doing it right because as I said, I'm not a strong swimmer. So that could be part of it because yeah, I just don't have the oomph to have gotten it up out of the water like she needed to be. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait ventouse. It's a windy day. Pardon my accent when I speak in French. I don't even speak English so good. So what's on the agenda for today? If you can see me or hear me, that is. What's on the agenda? It is currently 5 p.m. The sun is setting. I do not have much sunlight left. I know of a couple spots with some dead wood that will be small enough to fit in my fireplace, in my stove, because it is a small stove for a small tent. I've been to this location many times. I know it like the back of my back. And so I'm gonna go where I know there's some firewood. Close by, set up my tent as quickly as possible because realistically, if I don't have enough sunlight to get firewood, I have two Hudson Bay wool blankets with me. I'll make a video about wool blankets, my opinions on that whole thing. Um, yeah, I have two, two thick Hudson Bay wool blankets with me. Those will keep me plenty warm overnight as long as I have uh, shelter from the wind, which I will. And so I won't really need to depend on a fire. It's supposed to go down to about negative seven Celsius today. So, um, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. It could be worse. The downside, and I'm kind of second guessing what I'm doing right now, is that the location I'm going to is right smack dab on the windward side of the lake. All of the wind funnels right into that location. Only problem is, don't have enough sunlight to go elsewhere. What I should have done, if I didn't have such a big ego when I wasn't making a video, is seeing what time it was, seeing the sun setting, I should have stopped right at the first portage. Said, you know what, this is a good spot. There's some dead wood around here. I can set up camp, and if I want, I can go further in tomorrow, which I plan to do anyway. I plan to go further in tomorrow. However, I decided to burn a lot of my daylight with that stupid portage, dragging the canoe, dragging the canoe up a hill. Holy crap, that startled me. There's a log in the water, and I swear, it looked just like a dead body. Like that scene in uh, Lord of the Rings where, where Frodo looks into the lake, or the bog, I believe. Yeah, so hopefully I don't see any real dead bodies. Hopefully I don't become one. Um, this is bear country. I have seen bears here. I have had bears in my campsite. Well, one bear. A group of bears would have been a different story, but I have had a bear in my campsite here before. And that was actually fine. I'm not worried about those. I'm not liking this location. But... Yeah, it's really windy here, actually. You know what? What do I do? You know what? I'm, let's stop here. 
let's stop here. I have my tent will keep the wind off of me. I have my thick canvas tarp to wrap up in in case any wind cuts through. And there's some interesting there's some interesting structures here that we'll we'll go take a look at. Just some people made some I don't know. I don't know, some stuff. Let's go take a look. How do I get out of this without freezing my everything? Don't stand up in a canoe. Winter jacket time. It's so windy here, this is a dumb idea. Problem is, problem is, I'll talk later. Too cold. You know what, score. So these are the structures, excuse me. So these are the structures I was talking about that I spotted. It's not going to be much use to me, but that, that wood, that will be used to me. And maybe, maybe I'll take some of this stuff for kindling. All right. I'm going to set you down. I'm going to make my tent, pitch my tent, <laughs> right, right where? Where should I pitch my tent? Let's figure it out. All right. I realize that I'm running out of daylight. So my first order of business right now, set up a shelter. Like I said, I don't really need fire that badly because of the sleeping bag or blankets I have. I don't think I need to comment on this. Just clearing snow. All right, is that better? I have some light. So, my tent, right here. That's it. And my sweater's in the snow. It's good. All right. Focus. All right, here we are set up. I apologize for the lighting. I realize it would focus, focus, focus on something. For goodness sake. What the hell? Okay, here we are. I realize it's hard to see. You can only see the reflective tabs. Not much I can do about that. But this is home sweet home. For the night at least here we have my little sleep set up for the most part i'll add to it a little later it is a thick canvas tarp which is waterproof and two four point hudson bay wool blankets i'm gonna get that fire going 
it's getting oogie outside. Oh, but I see a star. That's nice. Okay, folks and folkettes, this is my setup. I have my boots over here. They are awesome boots. They're good to negative 70. Got my axe. I cut up some firewood. I'm gonna talk about my saw later, maybe in a separate video actually. I'll do a separate video on it because that's a really good saw. So a nice stack of firewood. This is my little stove. I have some water boiling on my stove. This is, I think it's a GSI Outdoors pot. It's amazing, I've used it over open fires, on this, on little burners, everything. And for dinner, what do we have? Garbage! Pure garbage, I tell you. Don't worry, I'll get the flashlight out of your, out of your way for, for right now. How's, 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 how's that for a bad camera angle? Okay, we have pasta Alfredo. This is from Canadian Tire. Um, it's garbage. I bought four of these when I went camping with my, my friend one time and uh, we didn't finish two of them because they were so bad, but I don't want to waste food. So that's my dinner tonight. Yeah, okay, glutton for punishment I am. Anywho, I'm gonna turn the flashlight off and maybe just get some nice shots, shots, shotage, footage. Get some nice shotage of the fire or something. Man, that's blurry, isn't it? Oh boy. All right, I have boiled my water. My pot's there, because I don't need it right now. Stove's going. I have it open just to let a little more heat out and also to let a little, can't speak, and also to let a little more carbon monoxide out. Yeah, anyway, here is the disgusting chicken Alfredo I was telling you about. It's gonna soak up, and if you think it looks like vomit now, it will continue to look more and more like vomit until it comes back up because of how bad it is. Anyway, that <laughs> that's my dinner. Yeah. Ooh, dairy. Mm, perfect. I'm lactose intolerant. Did I mention that? Okay. It's going to be a good night. It's going to be a good night. Oh, here's the flashlight in your way again. There we go. Do 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 do. Up. Oh, get back in there you. Boop, boop. Okay, all right. Ooh. Okay, this bag of dreck is ready. Unfortunately, I lost my spoon. Now I have to eat it with a fork, like a peasant. It's gonna be a rough night. I just wanted to take a quick video and show the stovepipe, which is red hot. Yeah, there we go. That, that is toasty. Warm my feet up by it. There we go. Okay, sorry for the shaky cam. Now I will see you in the morning. Good morning, everyone. It's around six in the morning. I'm sure you can hear just how windy it is. I had to restake a couple parts of my tent. And my fire died during the night, which is the disadvantage of such a small stove, but that's okay. I was able to get it going again. Right now, I'm sitting by it, and if I can show you, which I can't, so that's good, a little bit here and there, it is glowing red hot at the moment, which is nice, because it means I am warm again. Okay, I'll start this up again when I have better lighting to take videos with. It is about seven in the morning. At the moment, I've been up for the last hour, just tending to the fire. I boiled some water for myself. I 
and just had a nice hot cup of water and man things like that when you're out here they're so much better than they are anywhere else so over the night my decision did come back to bite me a little bit it is very windy here my tent came unpegged in a couple of places I managed to stake them back out from inside the tent so that's good on the downside however it came unpegged right over here and you can see that nice little hole that I have in my tent now and that is from the tent contacting the hot stove pipe and it just melted it so I have duct tape in my car but not on my person I don't exactly intend to stay a second night given that I have this big hole in my tent and no way to repair it furthermore I broke my knife last night whilst batoning some wood so I believe today will be my second and final day here That being said, it's pretty warm in the tent right now. Got some warm water, got a nice fire going, I've got my blankets to keep me warm. Just gonna sit here and listen to the wind for a little while. Good morning. I don't exactly know what time it is, but the sun's come up, so that's good. It was pouring rain not long ago, and at the moment it is just drizzling. So we are sitting toasty warm, almost, inside the tent. Here we are. There's the stove. There is the remainder of my focus there we go firewood I have my battery charging pack there I have my sweatshirt which managed to soak itself in the middle of the night so it's sitting over there in the pile of shame now this is my backpack it is currently empty with the exception of a couple of tins of sardines and some oatmeal in the top Yesterday it was completely full and I was complaining about how heavy it was. There's a good reason for that. The backpack itself weighs several pounds. However, it's a 75 liter bag. So there's a trade-off. Anybody who's gone backcountry camping will understand the struggle of needing to pack just that one more item in a small backpack and you don't have that problem here. Also, apparently, although I've never used it, it's a lifetime warranty will, where they will repair anything, blah, 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 blah. Enough on the backpack. It's, it's just a backpack. So, what all was in it yesterday that made it so bulky? Well, this is it. I brought two liters of water. I have my cup that nests in it. I have my Grand Forest Brook Scandinavian Forest Axe, which is absolutely fantastic. I have my Baco Force Bow Saw, which is 30 inches long. It is a big boy, and it is also fantastic. I would rather have this saw than any folding saw any day of the week. That being said, that's probably because I don't have the money for something like a Silky Katana Boy. So this was $30, this bow saw, Canadian. So, yeah. I also have a little hatchet. Just brought that, kind of uh, have some fun. Just, I uh, was going to find a dead tree, do some hatchet throwing. It's raining. That's not going to happen. I also brought my bow and arrow. Now, it is illegal to bring a bow and arrow into 
a park here in Ontario. That being said, I am not in a park. I am on Crown land where hunting is permitted. And that being said, I do not intend to do any hunting. I brought it strictly for some target practice. Also probably not going to happen because of the rain. I don't have broadheads on my arrows. I have field points. And that's all that was in my backpack, except all of the space was taken up by this. This is, and forgive the camera angle for the moment, this is a Hudson Bay wool blanket. This is the scarlet one. This, as I unfold it, is the iconic stripes. Yeah, these are 100% wool. They are genuine Hudson Bay wool blankets. They are five pounds each. Rolled up together, they took up more space than my backpack could realistically allow. However, I just shoved them in there. And that is the majority of the weight and the majority of the space used up in my backpack. Everything else, my water bottles, my axe, my saw, the bow, the arrows, everything else was forced to be on the outside of the backpack because of these. Well, and the stove. One good thing about the stove is that it fits in a backpack. Um, it's very small. It doesn't, you know what, it is radiating a decent amount of heat. It does a good job of keeping a tent at a reasonable living temperature and not too much else. It will not be balmy or hot in here, but you can cook on it and I'd rather have it than not have it. And that's everything I brought. Four items and like a blanket. Yeah. Messy. Okay. It's around 11 in the morning. Um, the weather is off and on not very good. There's supposed to be a storm rolling through uh, tonight that's supposed to last until tomorrow in the afternoon. My initial plan was to uh, to leave tomorrow around 8 in the morning. However, I don't want to do that in the middle of a storm. So I'm going to pack up and skadoot. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's, it's wet.
just going to take this time to reflect on the trip. I got a hole in my tent last night. Kind of wet, kind of cold. Not sure how I got wet, honestly, if I managed. But I think, I don't know, I had a good time, all in all. I enjoy the canoeing. I enjoy canoeing. That's what I like. Sleeping in a, on the ground? Not so much. Carrying the canoe over a hill? Not so much. Being cold? Oh my god, do I hate that. Um, but I do like canoeing. I like being able to go somewhere with the canoe. Actually traveling with it. And I appreciate that I didn't do a lot of traveling per se, but you know, I got from one place to another place, to another place, with, with the canoe, as opposed to just going and putting around a lake. I guess that's why I do this. I like the water. It's calm. It's peaceful. There's something about a canoe. You're really in touch with your surroundings when you're canoeing. I like fast boats too, don't get me wrong. But it's a different different experience. When you're in a fast boat, you just want to go fast. And going slowly, you don't you don't enjoy everything. Maybe it's the lack of the engine. Maybe it's because there's no motor on a canoe. The quietness of it. Where the loudest thing is your paddle hitting the water. Maybe it's the periodicity of the paddle. Paddle, splish. that's soothing to listen to. But I enjoy it. I enjoy canoeing. If I could canoe everywhere, I would. Is that what Venice is like? Can you just have a canoe in Venice? You just, hey, I gotta go to the store. I'm gonna uh, grab the canoe and just go down to the store. Pick up some, I don't know, Venetian eggs. I think those are just regular eggs from a Venetian chicken. Unless the phrase Venetian eggs means something entirely different, but I don't know. I sure as heck ain't gonna Google it though. Hello. Hello, friends. I hope you can hear me out of the water. I took the canoe up to the highest point. 
I took my backpack, took my backpack all the way across. And now, all that's left is to bring you and, uh, and my life jacket. You know, from carrying the canoe, sounds silly, but my arms are so tired just from carrying the canoe that I'm having trouble keeping my arm up like this. So I'm gonna stop recording and I will, I will see you on the other side of this final portage of this cold, wet journey. Okay, over and out for now. Well, it was cut a little bit short. I think the weather forecast may have been wrong because it's clear right now, it's very mild. But you know what, in for a penny, in for a pound. I'm off, off to go sleep in a real bed. Thanks for joining me. Stay warm. Thank mm -hmm. you.